Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. And we have a testimony. You guys have got to hear this. God bless you, Lucita. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And take it from here, girl. Okay. So I was just saying that it's so crazy how you confirmed what was going on in my situation in the recent past two days. Mm -hmm. I had two dreams. The first dream was I was talking to someone and I, in the blink of an eye, just cursed. And I immediately repented in my dream. Mm -hmm. And when I woke up, I repented too. Yeah. But I just, I didn't know why I had done that. And then the next day, I had a similar dream, but this was more elaborate. Uh -huh. The first phase of the dream was I met a woman, and for whatever reason, we were at a hotel and stuff. Um, we couldn't eat in the cafeteria. She, so she offered to us get together and eat in her room. Uh -huh. But she said as we got into her room that she wanted to lie down and eat in bed. Ah! So my children and I sat separately from her, but something told me, go check what she's doing in that bed. I pulled the covers back, and I saw two other people in bed with her. Oh! And I said, you don't see this? You don't see this? And she said, no, I didn't know they were in bed with me. And I said, everybody... Come on, come on, to my children. We threw out the food. We threw out everything. We started cleaning up the hotel room. Almost like it was symbolic, like we needed to rid ourselves of it. Right. Then the second phase was, I don't know how this happened, but I was sitting down and my aunt was doing my hair. Mm -hmm. And I'm natural. But she was putting a relaxer in my hair. So right. she was trying to change me. Mm -hmm. And I... I had an issue with fear of men that God already has been working on me with. Right. So in my family, any type of disobedience is um, disrespect. Right. So I told my aunt, I had to be careful. I said, Auntie, you didn't tell me I was getting a perm today. I already scratched my scalp. I can't keep it in. I got to wash it out. Smart. So she allowed me to do that. So I, one, I didn't compromise. Second, I didn't. Um, fall under fear of men. Right. The third thing was my oldest son, who's eight. I saw him come out of the hallway, and he was dressed in a girls' school uniform. Oh boy! And I said, "Honey, what are you doing?" I said, "You are a man. You're a male. You should not be dressing like that. This is not the identity that God gave you. This is not what you should be wearing. This is not. This does not belong to you. Right. Take it off." So I didn't compromise there. The next phase was lust and envy and jealousy. Uh huh. I saw a skirt, a beautiful colorful skirt that I wanted, but I knew that it wasn't mine and I knew who it belonged to. I was tempted to just take it and pretend like I didn't know where it was. And then when I got home, I could wear it. Yeah. But I said, no, that's not that's not the way of the Lord. I'm going to return it. I went to return it. And just to give you a little backstory of my walk with God, three years ago, this past Wednesday, I gave myself to God and I got baptized. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things I asked him to work on me was, was cussing. Right. I know that I cannot bless him with a dirty mouth. Hello. So I went to go return this skirt to the rightful owner, and she accused me of stealing it. Oh, boy. And before I could even think, I told her to go F herself. Ah. I got so upset. Whoa. So I repented in my dream, and then I woke up and I repented again, and I said, Lord God, I don't understand why I keep getting offended and I'm cursing. Like, I should be able to go forward. I, I don't understand why. I, what is in me that is 
keeps rising up that controls me that that's not letting me prevail against some of these tactics right and i was just like i don't know what it is in me or if i allowed anything in my household to do that because uh -huh. for whatever reason it's just i can't seem to prevail right and then i started looking around the house because when I first got baptized, I was having a lot of demonic attacks spiritually. And one of the things that I learned was to clean out my house. Hello. Get rid of any cursed items, any ungodly, worldly tied items in my house. So I'm I'm talking to God, I'm praying, I'm trying to learn to to seek God for his answer because he's my source. Right. Okay. I immediately called my husband and I said, honey, did you take those golf clubs and bring it back in the house? Three years ago, when I was cleaning out my house, my husband has golf clubs that he inherited from his father. Okay. But the brand name is Diablo. Oh, and Diablo I, is Spanish for devil. Gotcha. Yes. And I told him to get rid of it because I was under so much attack, I was getting rid of everything. Right. He told me he did not want to get rid of it. He was going to put it at his sister's house. Huh. Unbeknownst to me, to the present day, he brought it in that house but put it in the garage. Ah. So I'm getting attacked and I can't prevail because my husband brought an accursing back into the house, unbeknownst to me. Look at that. He, he can sleep, but I can't. Right. I'm troubled in my spirit. I'm feeling tormented because now the enemy is accusing me of being ungodly, not being spirit filled. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I, it's all in my head. God hasn't saved me. I'm just the same wicked person that I started off as. Look at that. I, called my husband and I told him I warned you not to bring it in this house <laughs> and now I'm going to chuck them and put it in the garbage uh. and he told me do what you have to do uh. so I threw them out in the garbage and when my children saw that they said mommy what you doing what are you doing and I explained to them and I, you, I referenced that same day today Joshua and Aiken, I told him that I told all my children, we have to be accountable for our own walks, but for everybody in our household. Right. Because it says that our household will serve the Lord. I have to watch out for my children, my husband, myself, and make sure that none of us is bringing sin in here because we can all be judged. Right. And have the same faith. So when I came on the conference call and you were speaking the same thing, it was confirmation that that was the source of my dreams, why I was getting tormented like that. And it's beautiful that God did that for me because I could have been upset. I could have been, I could have said, you know, David, you, you did this. I could have got really up mad, but God has shown me that when he reveals certain things to you, he's giving you the op opportunity to be accountable right. and change your circumstances mm -hmm. so that the household can be saved, so that you don't have to walk backwards, that you don't have to be defeated, and that you can have victory. Mm -hmm. But if we don't have that God-fearing spirit, that love for Jesus Christ and his ways, and make him our source, we won't hear from God. Right. Instead, we would hear from other people and be just as confused and deceived as the enemy wants us to be. That's right. Anything not of God is counterfeit and illegal. You don't need anyone else. It is good to have a pastor, an apostle, a teacher, an evangelist, a priest, a, a prophet to help you to edify you but they're not your source right if you want truth go to god thank you if you want help he is your salvation mm. if you need 
provision, he is the provider. Preach. If you need comfort, he's the comforter. And if you know you're walking in the way of the Lord, he will bless you. Yes. And guide you up, upon your steps. I had to take action immediately because that thing grieved my spirit so much. There's no way that God has gotten me so far in the three years that I've been baptized and walking with the Lord to have me stop right here. Mm. He says, that those who endure till the end shall be saved. Right. So I have to keep going. I cannot compromise. I cannot slumber. I have to stay awake, sober, and vigilant. I have to make sure that I'm clean and my light is bright. Uh -huh. I have to continue to go forward. And I have to make sure that the people around me see that example and live up to that example. Because we are all to look up to Christ. We are all to look up to Christ Amen. and make sure that we are held accountable. So I thank you for preaching that beautiful and strong message. Thank you so mm, much. Mm, mm. Thank you for sharing that, Lucita. For those of you who don't know what message, because Dum Dum forgot to record the message, uh, I preach from uh, Joshua 7 dealing with Achan hiding the accursed thing amongst his stuff. And God judged him. But the whole nation of Israel had to suffer until he finally fessed up. And then God dealt with him and his household. So just to let you know, that's what was preached. And I will be talking on that later in a few little short videos to make up for what I didn't record earlier today. God bless you, Lucita. Thank you for sharing that testimony. Beautiful word. And God Beautiful. bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for blessing us. Thank you, Lucita.